Hello and welcome Andy Ray Felt to Architecture Design and Photography. You are neither a architectural designer, a photographer, nor a, what's the third one in there? Ar architect, design, or photographer. But, or an engineer or whatever. But you design audio. Yes, I do. For human consumption. Yes, I do. So tell me, tell me first and foremost about yourself and the, the creative process that you use to pay for life and all of that. Yes, I am a musician. I've been a musician all my life, pretty much all I know. Um, I acquired a Bachelor of Music Composition degree at the University of Redlands. And um, I studied some piano and uh, I actually played bassoon back then, but I'm actually just a a rock musician who play mainly guitar and drums and uh, keyboards and bass. I just played live gigs most of the time and then about 27 years ago I met someone who was writing music for television, for commercials and I um, started doing sessions, just guitar sessions with him and pretty, mu pretty soon he knew that I could write music and um, and so I started writing music for him, and through that, those years of writing with him, I developed a lot of much better skill at composing music, mm. and I learned a ton of stuff from doing that, um, especially computer, computer uh, recording, and production. It has the I mean I would imagine the process much like the process for photography now going from film to digital it, it's just night and day difference what the quality you can get at the end with far less technical hurdles mm -hmm. is, is it the same with recording now that it's like people making their stuff on laptops and putting it out or is it like can you really tell the difference like oh this was not done in studio even though it sounds professional to all of you i can tell this was done on a laptop is that a thing or not anymore because on people at home can can sound just as great as anything how do you feel about that i feel fine about it i because i'm one of the, those people right, right. Who, i work from home in my studio and uh, make these productions it's not like the, the old days where musicians would go into a studio and there'd be a tape player and they'd, mm -hmm. and they'd have to like nail their parts better without punching oh. in all the time without because now in this digital realm you can mm -hmm. you can stop more and you right. can fix stuff. Okay, so so um your YouTube video, which by the way Andy has a YouTube channel that's it's a lot of kind of musical parody would you call it that parody. humor parody and and taking other creations and turning them into a new thing yes. in an audio way and your your one that caught my eye was lemmy g yes that that that, 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 <laughs> that was great and i really loved the thumbnail for that by the way yeah. um but it was i found that that's, yeah. that's the reason oh, why really? i did it yeah so yeah it's a it's a take on kenny g playing the solo for motorhead's uh, ace of spades and it's yes. it's hilarious but have you seen the documentary on kenny g that was put out like a year or two ago no it, oh man i would love to watch that with you because you'd know what what's going on so much more so kenny g the way he records is exactly like you just said he just he gets it out there and then he just takes the piece that he likes and he puts that in the song and he'll do the whole thing and then if this part's the best, he clips that out and puts it in and then nice. he keeps going. He, he's an absolute perfectionist, but the documentary is done so well because it takes all the, um, all the critics that are like, dude, this guy's just smooth jazz. Everyone loves him, but we hate him. All the critics hate him, but he's like the best-selling artist of that genre and he kind of created the smooth jazz. On saxophone too. Uh, is, yeah, on, on an alto oh, sax, right? Is kind of his thing. It, it, it's the it's a tenor. tenor I'm thing? sorry, soprano sax. Soprano sax. The one okay. that's kind of shaped like a clarinet. Yeah, it's the right. highest sounding one. Yeah, it's the golden clarinet. <laughs> yeah. To my eyes, but it, it's like, I think it's called listening to Kenny G. I'd like so highly recommend it. I it's it's amazing because it it gives you that really, really fair perspective of like the music critics are just confused by it. 
and and yeah. hate it and they call it like well it's not a jazz like call and response it's just some it's like instead of sex it's just masturbation but <laughs> it, it it's just him doing his thing and but you you then see the interviews with him and he's like i love playing i'm good at these melodies and i love working on this and perfecting it wouldn't it be wrong of me to not do what i feel called and am motivated and enjoy doing and right. it's just kind of like you can't and make a ton of money out of yeah, it yeah you from can't too. you can't argue with it you know and so it, it's a really interesting thing so i would highly recommend checking it out it's, incidentally i saw him when i was a kid like i think 1979 or something at a club oh, wow. and he was playing with jeff lorber and his name was kenny gorlock and yeah and they were a yeah. hardcore funk band really and he was kicking ass yeah, he uh, he started in Seattle, and it, it goes through all the different bands he was in. I, th I think mm -hmm. you you might really enjoy it. But I'd love to, like, I know creativity and what I do for architecture through a visual form of creativity. Mm -hmm. You interact with creativity through, like, an audio, audio a, yeah. an, an audio sense. Now, to me, the really incredible thing, like, I see creativity as... Uh, essentially problem solving as in i have an emotion from a situation how do i take this uh, situation with the resulting emotion and turn it into something that i can communicate it uh so others can feel the same that yes. that's kind of what i feel like uh creativity is doing and it that's kind of in the a little bit more artistic take on it, but it's also in the technological world or or anything else. It's like here's a problem, how do we solve it? Well, find someone who's creative in that realm, and they'll be able to solve this problem for you. So we've made a great piece of architecture. How do we look at it and share that best composition with other people? You call someone like me who visually knows that and does that. Right. We've got a good film, uh, you know, or, or like a silent piece that needs some music to it. You know how to look at a piece, try and get a feel for it, and then create something that communicates the emotions that maybe the advertisers are trying to put into a commercial or whatever, or your own experience into composing just for your own music, for band, or for like humor, or yes. whatever else. Mm -hmm. So when I approach an architectural project, I'll actually circle it visually. I'll just kind of circle it. I'll walk through it. And for me, it's kind of like all of a sudden you just feel a key fit in. And it's just like, oh, that's the composition right there because, and then I can articulate why. But I have to kind of experience it and then there it is. Mm -hmm. When you're given a, a problem, if you will, like, hey, Andy, we need music for this. Can you walk me through that process of, oh, okay, so then you go and you reference what they need it for, why they need it, and then how your emotions and feelings maybe would tie into creating this piece. Like, walk me through your creative process in that sense. Okay, so most of the time when somebody brings something to me and they need composition for it, um, they will, I will ask them, well, what do you like? What, what are you into? What, do you have any reference music that you might have in mind? precedence we'd call it in a visual sense in the architectural photography world sometimes i'll ask clients do you have other images that you think are good of similar works that i can use as a reference point yes so, yeah okay yes and so I, i've worked with a lot of clients in the past for in the commercial ad world and they'll bring me like the the latest the latest hit that that's on the radio and then like something like, from the weekend or whatever yeah or, something from the weekend and they'll say, we really like that. And then we have to do something without the vocals, mm -hmm. which is a, quite a bit of a challenge. And then now, they, why is that more of a challenge? Like, as in you're separating the music out from the weekend's music, or you're saying, all right, we're going to create something that's similar in this field, but there's just not going to be the lyrics reinforcing it like it is in your example. Uh, well, a lot, a lot of clients will say, well, we'll, we'll make up the music, which is the accompanying part, mm -hmm. and, and they'll say... Well, it doesn't quite sound, it doesn't sound like it because there's no vocals in it. Right, right. So that's a challenge. But basically what we do is we'll, um, what, I, what I used to do is we used to take a, a lot of music from our library and put it against it and see, see 
all that kind of fits too. Now, when you say your music library, is are, are these songs that you've created uh, in a sense just by your own? I have to create music because I can, and then it's back here, and you're like, oh, I remember I made this piece that might fit well with this. Yes. Okay. Yes, and a lot of music that um, my boss used to say, hey. Write write a bunch of music that sounds like this guy today. Mm, okay. If if we're, if we're having downtime and we don't have any jobs right. like for a couple of days, I'll be sitting there writing music that sounds like an artist or or a certain couple artists, and we'll put them in the library, and then we'll put them up against the picture, and we'll say, okay, well that that kind of fits the mood that they want, or maybe maybe they'll like this little different one, and then we'll send them a bunch of demos mm -hmm. of like seven demos of, of different types of things and see what they think and um, because a lot of a lot of spots a lot of commercials you can have a different mood creating type of music that would that that works like three different type of moods and so we give them that and mm. basically but basically it's, it's a lot of thinking about references before you start composing a brand new piece of music, you think about you think about some existing piece of music. I I do in my head mm -hmm. that that would work for 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 that. Okay, so you, so they'll give you a, a video spot or clip, and you'll kind of like, oh, this has that feel, like Eagles Hotel California or Green Day, Duke, whatever. Yeah, and you're like, uh, this kind of references that, and and in your in your consciousness, you can just kind of feel that connection. Yes. That, that's a, um, yeah, that's such an interesting thing that I think so many people would, would draw a blank on. Were they not creative in the, in the way that you are? Like, I can feel that a lot, but I have no clue. Like, I could do that part of it. I, like, look at a visual and think, I, I get the visual feel makes me want this kind of audio but i'd have no clue about the next step of actually creating music i've i know how to play guitar and i can carry a tune ish mm -hmm. but that that work of actually creating music i i just feel like i run into this wall of like i don't know how this melancholy how do you turn melancholy and now turn a corner and go into like a joyful thing like Yes, and there's there's elements like that. For there's first of all there's like minor and major chords, which is the basic thing. Major, for for an idiot like me, can you kind of explain how those feel and why? Yeah, well, it's all like I'm gonna sing a triad. Da da da. That's that, happy. That da, 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 Those are all. They all seem to agree in a way. Yeah, like, and, and that, that progress on each other. And that second note is like the third because a, a scale goes. One, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight is the octave. But if you go, if you skip the two and the three and you go one, or the two and the four, one, three, five, you have a triad. Mm -hmm. And if you played those notes together, it'd sound like a happy major chord. Okay. Now, if you take that, that second one, that third, mm -hmm. and you lower it one step, It'll sound like this. One, three, five. There's a conflict. And just that, just that difference. Not one, three, five. That's the minor chord. Hmm. So it sounds more serious. Right. And, and why, sad. How is it we can connect serious sad. and sad to just moving a note a little bit? It's, it's, you know, it's just, yeah, it's very interesting and see that's a that's a weird thing is that for me i can perceive those very well but i i can't articulate or create in that realm which is interesting that mm -hmm. that you have that like you can like well here's the reason you got these things and how much of that did did you know before you even went to school for that kind of thing where was it just like a very natural thing to you or yeah well since because i i i was like can i was um I worshipped the Beatles like when I was seven years old. Uh -huh. I mean, I was buying their records and I was just listening to them all the time. So I spent so much time listening to rock bands, uh, Creedence Clearwater, Three Dog Night, Beatles, and later on harder stuff, but uh, like Deep Purple and stuff. But um, 
I, I would just continuously listen to that stuff. And then I started learning it to teach my friends how to play the parts, mm. lifting up the needle. But I, I spent so much time listening to music that um, you, you start to know what the, emo you start to feel these emotions about uh, some song that sounds serious and sad, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. Beatle tune, and then the happier the happier sounding songs and, and you know it's a it's a feeling that you get now what what do you what does music do for you in your like emotional health in a way like do you use music to push you different directions or do you do you use it to pull you out of different directions or because music really affects me uh, if and here's a really interesting thing my wife can't do anything with music on nothing because she she, she just wants to hates listen. having music having music on at all. Like if I'm doing anything, cooking with the kids, anything, I'll have some music going. I really love the recent the the new stuff that sounds like '80s music that's just instrumental. Cool. Like Time Cop and there's a couple other that are really really retro '80s stuff, uh -huh. and it's just it's kind of this reflective, not melancholy, but it's very reflective and kind of trance like. You know, it has that '80s kind of like feel to it. Nice. But when that's on, I can just glide. Whatever I'm doing is like lubricated, and it's I can do it. Mm -hmm. Without it, I'm I pick up everything else going on a little too much, and it it starts to feel like I'm rolling around in like tinfoil or something. Right now, but for my wife, she's got this like ah, I can't focus the music. Ah, <laughs> ah. Like the music for her is tinfoil all over the place. Yeah. How how is it for you? It's it's interesting how it affects people like that. I mean, every, everybody's different, I mean, and, I, and I don't hold anything against a pers person who doesn't like who likes a certain music that I don't like very much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because uh, the the thing I do, she says that it affects her and drives her uh, far more. For me, it's like it it releases me to just do do my will in a way uh -huh. where for her it it seems like there's a will in the music that's making her like you need to listen to me and do this and to me the music is like forget about all the rest of the stuff of the world you you can focus on on your thoughts and move forward yeah well i i use music music the same way um and i pra and practicing music certain types of music really is it's healing for me like i'll sit down at the piano and i and i practice bach mm -hmm. and um that's that's a kind of like a healing thing for me interesting and, and then i practice on my guitar I'll, I'll read um like charlie parker solos and study some john coltrane solos and stuff and oh, wow. just practicing is a real therapeutic thing thing for me now any idea why that is like because for me, practicing has always felt um, like I was being controlled, like mimicking something else. But mm -hmm. I would imagine in the in in that rep repetition, maybe you you find the the spirit of the music in a way, and and your your actual intellectual causing your fingers and everything to stay in time and do what they're supposed to do, in some way disappears, and you connect with the, the emotion of it or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, it's a it's a feeling it's a big feeling of accomplishment the better you get it right right at, at doing something and, and getting good at learning a piece and stuff it's uh, it could be kind of like skating uh skateboarding is just so well, difficult yeah. and you abuse yourself so much trying to learn one thing and you're and you're going over and over trying to do yeah that thing. but then when you get it it's like wow i did it and then the, the really weird thing i found is that I, I stopped skating in my early 20s because it was pretty abusive. And my youngest son has started skating a lot, and he's really good. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of gotten back into it, but with, like, middle-aged man limitations and right. lots of pads. And, but I found, like, after about 30 minutes of the repetition of the practice of it, all of a sudden my body's doing things that my head didn't tell it to do that are right, which is nice. weird. It's like all of a sudden, like, and it was so pronounced that, like, the guys I was skating with were like, 
you're doing really well. What's, you know, and they're like my age with their kids and stuff. That's great. I'm like, I can't do anything wrong right now. This is so weird. And it just happened. It's kind of like riding a bike then. Yeah, but it's not like you immediately can do it with skating. It's Mm -hmm. such a, it's so much more difficult than riding a bike. But when you get it, it's like, whoa, okay, I remember this. And my body is doing all the, you know. You just had to warm up to it. There's definitely, I know now I I have to spend like 30 minutes just moving, yeah. you know, and, and kind of gently staying in the rhythm. And I, I imagine that's what musical practice is like. And instead of accomplishing a physical feat, it's like all of a sudden you're warmed up into an intellectual, emotional state yeah. where you can transfer it to that instrument. It is it is physical too, because uh, I, I'm a multi-instrumentalist and so I practice the piano, mm-hmm. but... But I'm really rusty because I, I spend most of my time playing guitar and bass and and programming stuff. So on the piano, I, I know that my hands don't do as, as well on all these scalar parts and arpeggios, and I have to warm up a lot, just like, hmm. so that's a physical thing. And then when you get it, you're like, all right, it's back. We can start going. Yes, but I have to practice all those tedious scales and stuff to, right. to really, so that's a little bit of a physical thing there. Hmm. Hmm. So the, for, for you and how you pay for life, uh, through using your, your creative abilities, are you familiar with a lot of people who do things that they hate and have to do them because they need money? And, Mm -hmm. and how do you relate to like, oh, here's Andy over here, just doodling around in his house and doesn't have to get in a car and commute and like how how do you deal with the the idea that geez i'm lucky to be able to do this and i have other people in my life that are stuck doing things they hate like how do you how do you feel about that but at the same time like the thing i struggle with is that the thing that you love if if it becomes too consistent and constant and demanding it can take from you the thing that you love yeah, and, and then it becomes the other thing. Like, walk me through your life in that sense. Well, I, I've I've felt guilty before because, uh, especially with my wife, she she had a job that she had she just hated, and um, she's not doing that anymore, which is fortunate. But uh, you know, I felt guilty. She'd come home all bummed out, and right. I'd be in my studio, you know, just still writing. in my underwear, like this is great. Oh, hey, honey. yes, yes, <laughs> writing stuff and. Yep. But I've been I've been on that side also because um I mean I for the twenty seven years that I, I worked at this ad agency, I, I commuted every day. So mm-hmm. that was that was a hundred miles a day in traffic. It's a lot of listening to music maybe. <laughs> a lot of listening to music and yeah and yelling at other cars. Mm-hmm. And am I actually left-handed on guitar? So I put my guitar on my lap, and I I so practice like... when you say left-handed, you mean you you finger with your right hand? So you played like Jimi Hendrix? Yes. Okay, but you do the strings uh, opposite to Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, opposite. Okay. Yes, the low string is on top. Yeah. Right, like like normal. So but... I'm sitting in traffic with the. I can put my guitar on my lap because the neck doesn't go out the window. Right. And I've had a lot of truckers flip me off and stuff. Really? But I spent a lot of time doing that, and I just practiced like these little picking patterns and stuff. But uh, right. but I let it get to me because um, I was I was um, I was really tired of commuting, so I, mm. I hated that part of my job. And, and you you had a hundred mile commute I mean, one fi- way, fifty miles in Southern back. California traffic is nothing yes, to see. Yes, going through that. L.A. going. Mm-hmm. Sheesh. Yeah, and I just sometimes it take two hours, and I just go crazy. But um, and then at work, I was writing music for a commercial. I mean, for a cartoon called "If You Give a Mouse a Cookie," and I was doing all the mu- I was doing folk music, and I was playing all the instruments. Mm-hmm. Now, now that sounds great, doesn't it? But nah, I was I was going crazy. I mean, really? What was the difficulty in it? Well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm writing to talking animals, and I'm just I'm writing these little these little tiny ditties that kind of go, right, 
Kind of oh, kind of like transition music between Dora's leaving her house and going here, and it's a little yes, doo -doo 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 -doo. yes, a lot of that, and then and then these okay. big themes, and then you know you finally fin you finally put in all these hours of getting it done, and then you send it to the the clients, the producers, and, and they're like, well, we don't know if this part's right. It doesn't really bring out the emotion of the cat. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so could you try something else? And, and you know, I I just started kind of losing it, but <laughs> but so I got through it. But uh, how did you get out of that? Well, the the, the season ended, mm -hmm. but I did good. I I did a lot of I I did a lot of episodes and I just <laughs> got through it. And, but I mean, the the working at a um, ad agency. Do you still work there? But you just work remotely, or uh, yeah, a little bit. Just okay. here, here and there, I, I work remotely, just doing a little bit of freelance work. Okay. There. And you're currently, for the last six years, working on your YouTube channel? It's been and, 12 years since I've been having that YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Okay. And what is that, having that outlet and what you do there, explain to people listening what it is and why you do it, what's the enjoyment, and what's the, what's the oddity of you that comes out in that? Well, um, that, was, that started because I was getting frustrated 12 years ago. I was getting frustrated going to the studio and writing music for other people mm -hmm. and not doing as much fun stuff. Right. So... <laughs> So I saw like, I saw these videos, they were called Shreds, where this guy was was writing, he was making like great players like Eddie Van Halen and Eric Clapton and stuff, make make it look like they were screwing up. <laughs> yeah. And they're called Shreds and they're really yeah. funny. Yeah. Like, kind of like the um, David Bowie and Mick Jagger doing the dancing in the streets, but there's no backup yes. music or yes. anything. Yes, yeah. And it's, it's just, just a feat like, ee, 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 yes. hi. It's and the same thing. And I love those. There's, yeah, they're hilarious. And um, and I thought to myself, well, I can do this, but I don't, I don't want to make, make it look like they're screwing up. I just want to make, I want to make Black Sabbath look like they're playing polka music, you know? Right. That's what I, that was my thing, so... Like, what was the first one I did? I did the Jonas Brothers. I made him. I didn't make made him do death metal. I went. I started growling like. Ugh. So that's, that, I think that was the first one. And then I made Metallica do smooth jazz, and that blew up. I made Inner Sandman sound like um, Kenny G, right? You know, pretty much without the sax. And um, and I just fell in love. I was doing this stuff because people were really entertained. I was entertaining people right. on the internet and I just kept on doing it and it blew up. And How's, how's that been going as far as uh, being able to, because that's a thing I've started considering is trying to develop a little bit more of a YouTube presence. We take all these videos and we put them on YouTube, but that's not really a YouTube channel. It's just a repetition of a podcast in a way. Yes. We do a we used to do a fair amount of kind of just behind the scenes kind of videos of here's this camera we use and we why we use it and stuff like that. But to really get into a YouTube channel that you can monetize, what's what's been your experience there? Yeah, that's been rough. I a friend of mine really helped me because I was I was having a hard time with uh with YouTube and I was having a lot of issues with uh because I was taking vocal tracks that I was finding mm -hmm. and um and I was using those, or I was using videos that are owned by other people also, like live videos I would use. Right. And so they would say, well, this is owned by them. You get a copyright strike. And so if you get three of those, you're out. But I, I got like two, and then they, after about three months, they take them away and all that stuff. Hmm. Well, now they got a, a policy where I can use my, I can use copyrighted stuff as far as vocal, I'm, vocal tracks and uh, and these videos and I, I make a little bit of money from, uh, mm. from YouTube every month yeah is, is there a is there a, um, a consistent thing you can see in the response from YouTube in what you're doing that you can identify that you start to hone in on more like oh people like to see 
harder edge stuff done like smooth jazz or smooth jazz made to look harder or what are you finding in your in your fan base that they connect with and and like to like to see and like to see more of yeah i do these radio disney ones where i where i sing and i play all the instruments and i make band like those really hardcore death metal bands i make them sound like they're the wiggles and i sing and those are really popular and i say okay those are popular and i got to do more and more of those and those those monetize really well because i am i'm doing all the music so that i'm not using vocal tracks mm. and um and then I, I ask for a lot of feedback from fans, and they say, oh, we really want to hear some more of the smooth jazz ones where I do a metal dance and all right. those. And the thing is, I do so many different types of things on my channel. I even put my own original music on there. And, my, and there's a lot of like serious sounding instrumental stuff on there also. A, a lot of... Um, the songs that I write where I'm singing, those, those are more like Frank Zappa influenced funny stuff. <laughs> but there's so much stuff on my channel that sometimes I I'm, feel a little overwhelmed about what I should be working on right. for that channel. Yeah, that's a that's a hard thing, especially for an open creative person, is that y your interest is basically anything new. Yeah. Like, oh, try that? Yeah. Oh, try that? Yeah. No, we like this and that's all we want Andy it's like I don't know if I want to do only that forever yes. you know so it, mm -hmm. and I would I think I would be a much more successful monetizer <laughs> if I, if I just... had like a channel that was like set for this mm. you know now with I, I have this weird thing personally in relationship to other photographers that I that I don't know uh I I I don't want to say I look down on them, but I, uh, because I struggle myself with imposter syndrome, I project the same feelings towards other people who are photographers. And, and what that essentially means is I look at what I do, and to me, it, I know how to do it, and it's very easy. And so there's some sense in which I'm thinking, I'm kind of pulling the wool over everyone's eyes because this is easy to do. They don't need to pay me this much. It's pretty simple. But the fact is, I'm here and getting paid to do this because I've shown that I can do this well and significantly better than the mass population, we'll say. Mm -hmm. So, but therein lies the imposter syndrome that you think like everyone else's experience is the same as mine. I know this, it, it has its hardships, but at the depth, I know how to do it. So it's, it's kind of easy, right? for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so you project that on other people and you, you, you have this weird kind of relationship with yourself in this weird thing of creativity and getting paid for it and constantly feel, feeling like almost like you've gotten away with something because you're, you're not having to do a job that you absolutely hate. And then you see other friends who are, you know, like the, the, the vast majority of people hate what they do, I think. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and not, not to say that there's obviously people out there who absolutely love what they do, but the vast majority of people are going to jobs that, that, that are pulling life out of them in a, in a fairly significant manner. And mm -hmm. to feel like I've somehow escaped that situation, is, you know, there's a lot of guilt associated with that too, because your fellow humans <laughs> are left in that. But then you see other people who've escaped that cycle like yourself, other photographers or other musicians. And I have that weird emotion towards them like you're scamming everyone else too to get out of the system. It's a, mm -hmm. such a weird psychological thing. How do you... See, I don't... My guess is that musicians... Musicians are an interesting breed in my opinion. And I can pick up from you that you're in your thinking and your relation to things to me you feel far more far less maybe uh articulate like a fast talker who can explain everything mm -hmm. and someone who's more so perceiving quite a bit all the time and able to feel it and then mm -hmm. translate it into music which it, it's a i don't know it's such a different thing that i would I would imagine that the the oddity of being a musician 
uh, would almost endear you to other musicians fairly easily. How, how does the emotional connection between yourself and other musicians, because you guys have to work together too, I didn't really think of that. You have to work together so much more uh, as musicians rather than like photographers. If, if there's another mm -hmm. photographer on the site where I'm working, it's like two mooses like, get out of here, what are you doing? I got right, right. You know, but if two musicians come together, it's like, oh yeah, no, I'll do this, you do that. This is great, we're doing music, you know? Yeah. How, how is that feeling towards other musicians in comparison? Well, there's a, there's a lot of, um, I, sometimes I get inhibited by if, like, I'm playing with a bass player that's like a monster bass player, and then I feel mm -hmm. like, oh, I, sh I shouldn't be playing with this guy because oh, he's, right. he's on a, this level and I'm only on this level. Right. So I'll feel that way, and then other musicians, I'll, I'll just, I'll feel like, okay, well, he's way below my level, but he's, he's fine for this gig and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and um, when I, when I look at in, successful musicians and musicians on the internet, um, I'm just, I'm like going right on, you know, you're doing great there. Mm -hmm. And then some of them will get a little jealous of. Right. There's and, the, there's this woman architectural photographer that I follow who just does the most amazing work. And the thing I keep thinking is like, how much difference does a photographer make compared to the architecture they're shooting? For my very, very specific thing that I do, because mm -hmm. the work she, that she's photographing is just absolutely beautiful. But I have to imagine she obviously has shot a lot of stuff in the past that was probably ugly, but she was able to make it look good. And so you eventually get to the point where you're only shooting stuff that looks good and then you just make it look even better. Mm -hmm. But there's also that thing of like, oh, I wish I... I had been able to do that, and I, that jealousy thing is always there. Yeah. And I, I wonder if it's more so in the visual realm than the musical realm, I don't know. but It's probably the same. I yeah. Think. Hmm. yeah. Now, how much, how much of a fear of having to do the horrible jobs do you live with on a day-to-day -day basis as a threat to, like, I'd better create and be able to monetize it, or I'm going to have to go back to commuting? Um... You know, it's there's not too much of a fear these days. Really? I'm just I'm just facing everything day by day, kind of right now, and yeah. whatever happens happens. If now, I have to go commute again, then it's just what it is. It is what it is. Now, how old are you? I am fifty nine. Fifty nine. Wow, you're doing great. Thanks. Jeez, um, I would imagine the the older I get, I'm forty. Six, I think. I, uh -huh. I thought I, the funny thing is, I thought I was forty-seven, uh -huh. and I was like, "No, you're forty-six." I was like, oh, "I just gained a whole year. Nice. I can goof off for the rest of the year." Nice. No, but it. Um, as I get older, like through my thirties, it was just an extreme amount of anxiety of of you better create, you better achieve, else you are gonna go have to get that job that you well, really, really hate. I, I had that anxiety too when I when I first started being like doing the the composer work because I was thinking, Oh, I'm not good enough, you know. Mm. They're I'm, he's just gonna fire me. Yeah. And get somebody who's good. And have, is it that you've gotten to a place where you realize I've I've got this. I can do this. It's Yeah, after a lot of experience, a lot of stress and a lot of learning and and developing the the production skills for the computer stuff and right. i i am much much more confidence right so it, it kind of it, that confidence will carry you through those emotional things that could be up and downs it's kind of a more hills rather than mountains and peaks and mm -hmm. um now for me i can reference uh visual um not mile markers, but like monuments of visual things that I'd love to be able to attain someday as far as like uh, other people's work of architectural photography that I look at. I'm just like someday if I can be that good, this is going to be amazing. So I imagine you have in your head, if we're focusing just on like commercial jingles, mm -hmm. like I have, I get jingles stuck in my head like nobody's business, like the by men and or what is it the farmers one we are farmers bump, 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 bump. yeah 
that do you hear those and immediately think like golly that's amazing or is it like uh, another hacky jingle like, i just think oh that guy's lucky lucky he's a luck he came up with that and they picked it because i right. i used to do that they're they're called mnemonics you know with like a couple notes yeah dun, 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 dun. yeah we... i can't get that out of my head there's something amazing about like and it's just a couple few notes and it's like anytime i hear anything now that's like i'll just end it with uh-huh and and why do my kids know without ever hearing it the like they know what wah 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 means it's disappointment that like okay they just they just get it or the na 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 Everyone knows. Everyone they know grows that. up that. And that. they're homeschooled. They don't hang out with, like, the kids that are all doing that to each other. They just knew it. Like, it was just part of the DNA, you They, know? they saw it somewhere, like, on a cartoon. If yeah, were, and they just immediately TV. were like, I feel that. I'm, uh -huh. I will now use it. <laughs> yeah. It's just a few little notes there. Right. So if... if if you had to look across the the history of television and anything else, like ones that you pick out, they're like, oh, they nailed that mnemonic. Like, are, are there ones that stand out to you? There's tons of them. Like, I just sing like the McDonald's one. Da -da, ba 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 ba. Right. I'm loving it. And um, the ones that you that you just sing. Yeah. They're... <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm nothing's coming across my head right now, but. Uh... There's just tons of them. Yeah, to me, it's a, that farmer's one has been like the last five years, it seems, of like, gosh, can't get this out of my head every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. So, in, if, if you had the, um, if you had the, you had won the uh, billion dollar lottery and being the creative that you are, what, what would be the, the, the future of your creative life? Like, Oh, I don't have to worry about money. I'm going to be creating now, just doing what I want. Yeah, I, I would just compose like really funny Frank Zappa inspired music, and I would hire a band, and then we'd go tour. <laughs> so it'd go be play. We make, Zappa meets Weird Al meets like mashup kind meet, of stuff. Meets metal, meets punk rock, meets you know. Oh man, yeah, I, it'd be just fun. That be, that kind of sounds like you could do that without winning the money. <laughs> that'd be great. But, uh, you know, I'm just, for now, I just make up stupid songs on TikTok. And, right. And uh, I'm, th I'm thinking of putting together a little solo act where I just go out there with my guitar and sing about funny stuff. Like the skier whose penis froze. I, I wrote a song about that. Is that a real thing? Like yeah, this Finnish guy in, uh, in the, on the Olympics, he wasn't wearing the proper stuff. And apparently he froze down there. Did he lose it? No, I think okay. he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I wrote a song called Frozen Penis, you know. So. Is that like the uh, detachable penis? You remember that song? Yeah, that's a great tune. That always comes up on my feed on Pandora. <laughs> yeah, that's, just like, that's like from the 90s. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. my my assistant that I work with all the time, he, he likes 90s stuff. And so it'll just come up on that playlist. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, here's detachable penis again, you know catchy it's yeah. just narration with that echo guitar right somebody in the background singing detachable <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's basically what what you're creating now that kind of has that weird like oddity but humor and yeah and this it, thing the subject matter is humorous yeah 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 pretty much yeah <laughs> so that's, that's great I, that's my songs the subject matter has to be humorous but, uh, right now what why why the humor rather than like serious more more introspective music or whatever well i do that also mm -hmm. uh instrumental music type stuff yeah guitar like that piece that i put against your uh, mm -hmm. your awesome photography video about with that house that was just like instrumental guitar type yep. based guitar solos right I do a lot of that and that uh in trying to, it's such a foreign um, emotional mind headspace for me to try and put myself in. So I'm, I'm trying to like hone in on questions that can, 
that can be comparative to to my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but like in that, what what are the um, the emotions and the feelings when you're thinking like, what is it that that you like run into like, oh, this is going to be a great comedy humor music piece and then where where do you have to be emotionally to make more of a receptive to the visual and then put out uh audio to to be in accordance with right mm -hmm. so the what what is the spark of inspiration that starts the more youtube kind of uh i would call them like musical sketches it seems like what you're doing in a way mm -hmm. they're they're not like um they don't seem like it's it's concerto number five and this will be all the time. This is like a, more of a doodle that you're having fun with. Yeah, I'm I'm using the visual stuff that I find. Like mm -hmm. if I find a Taylor Swift live video, then I I will I want to make her to the opposite and it'll be funny because I've made ones of her singing metal and I take her vocal track and I change the chords to a minor. Oh. Heavy metal, mean sounding mode. Right. And and do you in the computer manipulate her voice, or do you like sing it over yourself and then dub it onto her video? I, I don't do anything with the vocals. I don't manipulate. I just have so it sounds pure. It's the same vocal part. Oh, okay. But if I change the chords to the vocal part to a happy sounding vocal part, you can you can go from the relative major key to the relative minor key and, you, and they'll fit and they still fit they right, still fit right. okay have you seen the the there's this one youtube channel that i've started following where it's a guy on drums and he wears really 80s 90s kids kind of stuff oh, i haven't seen it. black background and they throw at him like britney spears lincoln no it'll be like slipknot mashed with britney spears some of them just go off. They're amazing. That's and awesome. And others are just like, he's sitting there trying, he's a drummer. And mm -hmm. he's just like, what the, because it, what did they do? They did Hey Ya by Andre 3000, um, those two guys out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. mixed with another one. And it's like, it was something like, let the bodies hit the floor. But with Slipknot or, or with the Andre Hey Ya. Nice. And it's they somehow, up. yeah, they somehow made that work. And it, he starts out with the drums and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, and he's just like, and it, he <laughs> has to resist going to the rhythm of Slipknot or whatever, you know, and yeah. stay with the other. And it, and the humor is in like stretch pulling him in these different directions. Nice. Is I'll send you the link. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, but whoever's picking them and mashing them together, like they did one that was, um, Roxanne by the police, mm -hmm. but all it is is rocks, and they cut it off at rocks, and so it's rocks, and that's it. And they somehow blend it so it's like a song about rocks, and oh, it's just the cool. most absurd thing. Yeah, <laughs> and so like half the time he's he's falling apart because he's laughing so hard, or he's just like cringing at how weird it is. You know, it's it's a it's a again a fun exploration of musical oddities. That's Very great. much in the same genre, kind of, I guess, of what of you were doing, too. Yes, so. there's a lot of creative, very talented people out there now. Yeah. When I started 12 years ago, there, there wasn't very much. It was, I kind of felt like I was all alone a little <laughs> bit, but not anymore. I mean, I'm... What do you take inspiration from, mostly? Anything. Because I, I like pretty much all types of music, even goofy music, which I... Goofy music I call like polka, and mm. I like to listen to the Mexican stations when I'm wow. driving here. I what what is what what's with that? Why do I enjoy that too? Like I'm I'm not from that culture. I've never even experienced well, that sound, culture it much. It sounds fresh to your ears. Yeah, it, it has it sounds, like a, and it's happy. It's polka music, and it's kind of right. It's kind of goofy. I mean, polka music. Yeah, is I goofy, mean but, polka and the northern Mexican. Uh, what do they call that? It's kind of like country mu Mexican country music, I think, is a, yeah, how a friend a described bit of it to me. To it. Yeah, it's... but it has that polka, dh, 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 and yes. it and it's like really festive and just like yeah, it's festive. I have no idea what they're saying, but because I don't speak Spanish, but it, but yeah. yeah, but it sure sounds great compared to the the pop tune that I was just yeah. listening to. So I switched the dial. You know? Right, right. That the pop music today is like. Yeah, it's a bunch of crap.
crap. How do you, how do you feel about the the trends of music throughout time? Because like in the early two thousands, when it was just hardcore like Britney Spears, in sync kind of stuff, it felt like the producers and the people in control of the record companies had just refined it so far down to like a distillation of yeah. of it kind of feels like, it feels like fast food kind of. mm, i have a good line about so fast food uh what i call fundamentalist religion and uh pornography are all they have a similarity to them i bet each one <laughs> of them are a shortcut to the reward that cut out the process of getting there yeah so like with pop music it's just the it's like the hook it, that's it it's a hook and it's and it's just it's super repetitive really and it's really good it's like a, just a great hit of cheesecake it's got the bass the bass is, sounds perfect in your yeah. car you know and it's just like ah oh. but then you listen to it twice and you're like i completely know this song it doesn't hold anything for me if anymore if you're forced to listen to it at least 50 more times if because... if you accept the radio yes yes if you keep and it then on that station fast food is like you just drive up and they throw it in your car and it's like, mm, and then as soon as you're done, you're like, Ugh, yeah, ugh, you know, and then pornography is like, I'm not going to go meet someone. I'm going to have to put up the frustration with it. I can just go watch this, get off. And uh, it's great. Yes. And all three of those things, like fundamentalist religion is to me, it's here's the do's and don'ts. Just do that. And then you'll be in line with God. You're good. And it's like, there's no, there's no like, well, what about all the failures that I need in my life to really know the value of these things? You know, the, the realness of it and the process of it and the relationship of it, those three things, they're just all these, these weird leapfrogs to those other places. I heard Mm -hmm. someone describe the, like classical music as being very difficult to listen to because you have to it takes so long to map it out in your mind to, to really I can see know that. it. I can see that for, for non-musician people or... Yeah, someone like me, I'm just like, whoa, I've got to take time with this song. Yeah, it's not enjoyable to listen to. It's a, yeah. I mean, I guess it's enjoyable to, for me to listen to it because I grew up... My, both my parents are classical musicians, mm-hmm. professional classical musicians, and I, I uh-huh. hated it when I was a kid. I was like, no way, the Beatles, Deep Purple, you know, rock and roll. So I guess later on in life, after being forced to practice it and then practicing it for enjoyment later on in life, I, but I still don't like opera. Now, why not opera, you think? I just don't like the, you know, that. I just don't like that sound. I don't like that vocal sound. Right. The, and is, is it too controlled and pretentious, you think? Or what is it in there? I don't know. It's kind of... It's kind of like the same with country. I don't like country except for the fast, the fast picking stuff. Like I don't the like, more bluegrass. I don't like country with vocals. I don't like to hear a, a hillbilly sing his lead part. Or okay, so here's one interesting one for you in a similar vein. I think I I so I grew up in a very uh, what I would what I would lightly call a, a fundamentalist religion, Seventh Day Adventism, mm-hmm. which is very dictated and everything is known. There's really nothing to experience other than being in line with God through making sure you do eat and say all the right things. Right. Um, now, Christian music to me has always been a difficult thing because I've played, I've played bass in the Christian band. It all sounds it, like YouTube or Coldplay. Right. It has this. Um, it has this yearning constantly. Yeah. It's that yearning. And I've only ever interacted with one Christian song that didn't feel like yearning that really hit like, oh, this is good. This is actually a good, a good artist, good song, good music, you know. But it, I can only now listen to Christian music that is more like bluegrass oriented. Cool. Because to me, that feels like genuine. These are a bunch of podunk hillbilly singing about what they actually believe there's not a lot of production trying to be able to fit into mainstream and say the right things and and really put enough yearning in there to communicate that we really want to know god like to me it feels so bad to do that Mm -hmm. to something like that that's searching for god be it islam christianity judaism whatever Mm -hmm. to to make a production in a way out of 
both music and then spiritual belief just feels wrong to me. But in, in a bluegrass sense, I feel like it's very genuine. That's now, cool. I can take bluegrass for a certain amount of time. Yeah, then you have to switch. Yeah, you, you gotta. But it's still like that to me seems genuine. Like real gospel music seem, seems genuine. Or real like gospel chants. music with the big black big choirs. choirs and yeah, it's just oh, like kick a ass. waterfall of yeah, just. Yeah, and then whoa. There's, there's one gospel CD. I forgot. Baptist. I forgot. Mississippi Baptist. I forget, but I love those songs. Mm. I mean, the, the, the chords, power of the chords community kind of, within it, yeah. too, is just... Those are great tunes, and the, the chords kind of sound like Stevie Wonder chords. Oh, yeah, which I yeah, love. yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, it, that's always been an, an interesting thing for me, is the, the uh, difficulty with contemporary Christian music, because it doesn't feel authentic, I think, is what it is. It, it, it feels, feels like false polished. hearing. Polish, polished, like, can we have more yearning, please? You know, they're pushing the button and like, you got to have more yearning. Yeah. It's like, but, okay. What? <laughs> yeah. An oddity there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't enjoy playing those tunes. So you, you played in like church bands and such? I played uh, in a church band. Yeah. We, we, we had to get up at five and I had to get up and be there at six in the morning on Sundays. Mm. Usually I smelled like a brewery. <laughs> So it was a gig for you rather than it was the church you went to? or uh, No, I did. I, I was a church member and I did it for free. Mm -hmm. I played bass. Well, it's probably a good, um, at least, uh, balancing effect to the night before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt good about myself, I right. guess. Hung over, but I felt uh, like I was doing the right thing. I don't know. <laughs> are are you still in, involved with, with belief and church in, in that way at all? Or? No, no, not really. I mean... I believe in, I believe in God and the universe and just not being an asshole. Right. Yeah. I I years ago kind of uh, left it, um, but believe probably much more than I ever have. That's good. But but not in a regimented uh, ideological religion. Religion thing. Process. Yes. More of a spiritual thing within yourself. Right. Which. At the same time, it always feels like a bit of a cop out to say that to like, well, I'm just going to make up my own rules, and it, it's it's not that I I do believe that there are rules to life that are true and outside of us that if they are observed, followed, or known, that it makes for the most balanced outcome of our yeah. society. Um, but the the idea of any time a group gets together, there's a good George Carlin line like, love people, hate groups. The groups, no matter what, if you're a group around an ideology, it's just a matter of time until you start to get armbands. And then you're going out at night and killing people. Yeah. Eventually, you know, it's, yeah, I agree. It, so, it's crazy. So, Humans are crazy, crazy species. So I was just watching this thing the other night with my kids on um, on the great apes. And, you know, they're starting to use tools. Really? Yeah, they'll use twigs and they'll put them in an anthill to pull out ants. Or they'll use two rocks to crush um, palm, palm dates so they can get to the meaty inner part. You have to get one rock, put it on there, and use another rock to smash it. Amazing. Chimpanzees sitting there doing this. It's like, oh, wow. They're, they are creating tools in the physical realm to accomplish... Uh, to fulfill needs, to fulfill their desires. Amazing. Now humans go the next step. We, we've mastered tools and we can make airstreams and cars and houses, right? And, and we can make atomic bombs to kill each other. Oh, let's not go there, right? Right. But the, the, the real thing that differentiates us, I think, from those with tails and not with tails, um, is that we make tools now intellectually. Mm -hmm. So instead of physically making tools to meet our needs, we made, we made tools in the form of words, in my opinion. So now we took our intellect to create um, tools that we can use in exchange, right? So we can actually talk rather than mm -hmm. just feel in the moment. But we also lose with every tool becomes an advancement in technology. You lose something about your humanity. 
So right. us being able to talk gets us to be able to know each other better, but it also creates all the future potential and the knowledge of the past. And it pulls us away from this present moment. Mm -hmm. But in this present moment, we can still communicate. So it, you have all this weirdness, but that ability to make those intellectual tools makes it that you also, with that, you, we have a greater degree of projection of our intellect. So we think there's a future when there's not. There is mm -hmm. no future. There is no time that is not now. It will, it will only ever be now. But because of our intellectual tools, I, I feel like we had to create this idea of time to be able to accommodate thinking forward. Like what's yeah. going to come? So you have to create this concept of time. There's only ever the very present, and it feels like that's what animals live in. They live in an emotional state, but they can't articulate the emotions into articulate thinking words as much. Like we do, yes. Right, but they're getting there. They're starting to do the tools and give them another million years. I'm sure, you know, two chimpanzees will probably look somewhat like us and be sitting in something like this, and maybe we've left the planet. Who knows? Yeah. But that's a, to me, it was a really weird moment to think, like, did our, did our, ability to create mental tools then facilitate this weird thing of time that's affected by gravity how that works is just crazy but mm -hmm. did we is it possible that we created the concept of time because of our intellectual tools that needed to be able to think about the future to be able to utilize those tools which is way off subject sorry but it's all right is it was me a couple <laughs> nights ago like on my ipad like this is really weird but maybe yeah but i mean music has timing in it but you're only ever executing the time within the present moment yes so yeah and you're recording it for yeah and then you get to hold on to it and share it which they didn't which in the past were able to do you that. had to be with someone who could sing now you know yeah. or play now people had to go to that cathedral right. or right that auditorium and or... and in that they would have this amazing experience of we can't hear this anywhere else but in this impossible to build thing that has all this also kind of weird audio stuff built into it you'll hear it this only one time right and you're only going to hear it this one time and we're going to experience it together and that bonds those people in some way I now we have less of that ability to bond, but we all get to share it anymore. You know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's it's weird. I wonder, I wonder what we're gonna be in like a thousand years. You know, like who knows? <laughs> who knows? Probably some some planet right here. 